welcome back to the She Shed. Today's tutorial is going to be on a waffle stitch snood. So what is the yarn that I'm going to be using for this? Well, it's in here. Can't really see it, can you? I can't really tell you much about it because it comes in a pack like this. What it is, is we buy it from Spotlight. It's $10 a bag and it's full of yarn that is end of line and I'm assuming that they're not going to make it anymore so they put their off bits in a bag and sell it for a really good price sometimes you get really dodgy yarn <laughs> other times you get really awesome yarn and sometimes you get yarn that you go I don't know what I'm gonna do with this this is a little bit like this one so this yarn is super fluffy. I'm pretty sure it's acrylic. It could be mohair, but I have a funny feeling it is acrylic. Um, I have trialed it out so that I know what gauge I am using. So that's the thing with this, uh, when it comes bag like this, you don't have any information about it. You don't know where it comes from, what gauge hook to use, uh, what it is made out of, how much is in there. It's all a little bit of trial and error. Uh, so it feels like there's a lot of yarn in there. I'm assuming it will only take me a ball to make this snood or hooded cow or hooded scarf or I call it a snood and uh, so working out my gauge for this yarn I'm using my 5.5 millimeter hook now how many stitches that you need to start off with depends on what you want around your neck so basically what you need to do is just keep chaining until you've got a chain that is long enough to work around your neck but for the waffle stitch you do need a multiple of three so matter no matter what uh, chain length you make make sure it is a multiple of three so I'm going to start chaining now and I'll see how many I need for around my neck and I will get back to you and let you know. Okay, so I ended up with 90 stitches, which went around my neck quite comfortably. And when I joined the chain together and put it over my head, it was a nice comfortable fit. So make sure whatever size you make your chain, that it, it dra drapes nicely around your neck, but then you can just hold the two ends together and pull it over your head and make sure it's not too tight and that it fits nicely over your head. So for me that was 90. So if you're able to get a yarn that's a 5.5 millimeter hook and you're following along with me, then 90 stitches is what I did. But of course you can up it or down it to whatever suits your yarn and whatever suits um, your head or whoever you're making it for and remember it has to be a multiple of three for this pattern to work so double check triple check that you've got a multiple of three now this is a fluffy yarn so it took me a few goes to count it to make sure I had the multiple of three and I triple checked it hopefully you'll be able to see um, working with this fluffy yarn um, I really did want to use it for this because I think it's going to work out absolutely beautiful so our first row, once you've done your chain, is going to be a row of double crochet. So we need to chain two, and what we're doing is working into the back loop of the stitch. So there's the V, and that's the front, and then when you turn it over, you'll see there's a loop at the back, and we're going to, for this first row, be working into the loop on the back. So we've chained two, so one, two, and I'm going to the third stitch, turning over and I'm going to be doing double crochets. So that's yarn over, going into the back of that loop, grab your yarn, pull it through, and grab your yarn, pull through the first two on your hook, and grab your yarn and pull through the next two on your hook. Yarn over, into the next loop, grab your yarn, pull it through, 
grab your yarn, pull through two, and grab your yarn and pull through the remaining two on your hook. So repeat this for each stitch in your chain and work your way along and I will meet you at the end of this row. When you have crocheted your 90 stitches, make sure you still have 90 stitches. Double check, triple check the a multiple of three if that is whatever the multiple of three is make sure you have that because the pattern is not going to work if you do not have that multiple of three okay so there's my very long chain with my first row done and now we need to join it together because of course it is a snood it's a continuous circle so therefore we need to join the two together so lay it out flat Make sure it is flat and no twists and bring the two ends together. It might help if I get it the right way because I am right handed so therefore I need to be having the uh, start of the row on my right. So there we go. Let's just make sure it's not twisted. and we're good to go there we are and now when you've got it not twisted coming together you need to slip stitch in the top of the first stitch and so put your hook in the first stitch and grab a yarn and pull through those loops on your hook. Then we need to chain three. And to start off with, we are going to double crochet into the first stitch. and then we're going to do a front post double crochet so there's the next stitch and we're going to go into that stitch from the back grab your yarn pull it through and then do a normal double crochet now the next two stitches are going to be double crochet There's one, there's two, and then the next stitch is going to be a front post double crochet. And then the next two, double crochet in the top of the stitch, and then the next one, front post double crochet. And then the next two, normal double crochet in the top of the stitch and then the next boop, and then the next one double crochet so you should be starting to see your waffle pattern so just repeat that as you're going around so the next two stitches will be a double crochet in the top of the stitch so two double crochets as normal and then the next stitch is a front post continue that all the way around and I'll meet you back at the beginning here where we join the rows together and we'll go and do the next row okay so you should finish off with a double crochet in the top of the stitch and then you are going to join at the top of your round so you're going to join your round at the top of the first double crochet you did not the chain that doesn't get counted so go to the top of your 
double crochet first one of the round and slip stitch the the round together then chain three turn so that now your work is inside out and we are going to be doing a front post double crochet into this first stitch here so do your normal front post and then it's a double crochet in the top of the stitch so a normal double crochet and then two front post double crochet and then a double crochet in the top of the stitch or a normal double crochet and then two front post double crochet so what you will see is that you're actually doing the opposite of the first row so it should match up with the front row so if you did a double crochet a normal double crochet on the first row on your second row it is going to be a front post and then if you've done a front post double crochet it is going to be a normal double crochet on that one and this is what allows the waffle to stick out so as you can see there we go the waffle is now sticking out so that was a front post on the front and on the back it is now a double crochet normal double crochet so these two here were the normal double crochets and on the other side they're front post double crochet so you can continue around like this so and it's really easy to follow because the pattern pops out at you so you know where you're at if you've dropped it down walked away you can come back and you'll know exactly where you're at because that is popping out at me so I know that that is a front post double crochet and that one's sinking in so I know that that is a double crochet normal double crochet in the top of the stitch so I've got two front posts and then a normal double crochet so on my back row my inside of my snood is always going to be I'm all <laughs> twisted around so the inside of my snood is always going to be my two front post double crochet followed by the sink the double crochet normal double crochet followed by your two front posts and so on and so forth and the correct side the outside is always going to be your two double crochet with your front post two double crochet with the front post and I hope that makes sense now let's finish this round and I'll show you how to continue to the third round or I should say the fourth round okay the last stitch on this round should be a front post double and then join the first stitch of the round miss the chain don't don't go into there go into the first stitch of the round do a slip stitch join the two together and there we go we've got the third round completed so that's the inside of your snood and this is the outside of your snood and you can see the waffles are starting to create now so after you have joined together chain two and turn and then do a double crochet followed by a front post double crochet then two double crochet
followed by a front post double crochet and then two double crochet and so on and so forth for this round and I will meet you back at the end of the round to just refresh you for the back inside round so I will see you at the end of this round at the end of that round you should be finishing off with a double crochet in the top of the stitch and then do a slip stitch into the first stitch remember not into the chain and we have finished that round and you can really start to see the waffle now chain two turn your work and then you start the first stitch is your front post double followed by your sing your double crochet in the top of the stitch and then two front post doubles double crochet in the top of the stitch and two front post double And you just continue following that for as many rows as you feel is long enough for your neck and then to bring it up over to your head as a snood. How many rows that will be all depends on you and at this point in time I do not know how many rows that will be for me because this is the first time I have made with this yarn. So I just keep working when I'm making my snoods until it fits comfortably when you pull it up over your head. When I've finished I will show you the finished product and for the moment I'm just going to continue making this snood. So remember at the start of a row that's on the inside you're starting with your front post double with one double crochet then two front post doubles one double crochet two front post doubles when you come back to join make sure your last stitch is a front post double and then slip stitch into the stitch not the chain then chain two and turn the other way and remember on your other side the front side you're always going to start with a double crochet followed by a front post double and then two double crochet front post double two double crochet front post double so on and so forth and there we go so continue working this and i will continue working mine off camera and i will meet you back here when i've finished if you are following along with me then you will find out how many rows i did and you can do the same all right, so I will see you in a few seconds, but for me, it might take a day. All right, so I will see you shortly. Here we go, here is the finished snood. And I ended up doing 30 rows. So make sure you finish your snood on a row that is facing out. So the outside row. Okay, so we just need to finish off so cut off your yarn and slip stitch into the first stitch and then take your yarn and pull it all the way through and then just sew in the ends And when you sew in the ends just try and make sure that it is as even as possible along the top so you, it's not obvious where the start and the finish is so you might have to pull a little bit so the little end goes in and then when I sew in the ends I just weave backwards and forwards over so that it won't come out And then the one that you started off with, when you sew in this end, just try and make it look even like the um, 
the rest of the row. So, and it's not so bad when it is this fluffy yarn, you can't really see it too clearly. And then just sewing it in. And there we go, this one is done. So there was the seam, so the way that we did it makes it so that the seam is invisible, quite hard to pick. And just so you know how long and if you were following along with me, the length of this was 35 centimeters, which is nearly 14 inches. Okay, so, but obviously do it as long as um, your head requires. Okay, everybody, well, I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial um, making your own uh, snood. If you do make this snood, I'd love to see a photo. So please send me a photo via Messenger on Facebook or you can go to my website and give me um, a photo there. It's at luckyplatypus.com.au or you can go to Instagram and share one with me on Instagram at lucky underscore platypus1. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And I hope to see you at a, the She Shed again sometime very soon. Until then, bye everyone.